Well, good morning. Welcome back to Twin Stick Garage. Boy, that Kenworth looks sharp sitting out there. So, another fresh Saturday morning where we're going to try and get some, some work done on these, on these old trucks. And what the plan is today is to start working on this set of tandems for the Smoking the Bandit replica truck snowman trailer. Any guy that would paint his truck like this would go to a minister's funeral dressed in feathers. So of course I pushed these in here last weekend and now I'm ready to get uh, to get rolling on it. So lots of surface rust. I'm gonna try and what I'm thinking is I might actually tow this outside and then get going on it with the needle scaler. I might wait a little bit because my neighbors are probably not gonna be too happy with me, but knock all this rust off of here clean out all of this this old junk and dirt and get her cleaned up and ready for some some primer and some paint but first i wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that uh that, I, that i've also been working on so of course i got the iron duke project here and i've been working on the rails as you can see they're they're starting to get cleaned up i've been doing like i say some body work been filling in with some fiberglass filler. Been using this Vivor polisher. It's actually done a nice job of knocking down. So when I put in the uh, the fiberglass reinforced filler, the the Vivor polisher actually knocks it down and makes it smooth. <laughs> and then I've been going after it with the board sander. So. It's been getting there, still a lot of work, a lot of work that needs doing, but I have been talking with Blake about what we're gonna be doing with the back end of this truck. And of course, since it's so long, it's a 290 inch wheelbase, and you got this big cab, square cab sitting up front. Well, it's actually not the big cab, it's the smaller cab. And then you've got so much frame rail. I wanted to give a little more beefiness to the back end of this truck, so. What I was thinking of going with was big fiberglass tub fenders. So I've reached out to the Big Rig Chrome shop and they're actually working with a company called FiberTech and they're building us some custom fenders. So those will be here in the next few weeks. And then I've been talking with Blake about how we're gonna actually connect those tub fenders in. So what we're thinking of going with is a, uh, well, let me show you. Thinking of going something like this. So like I say, the fiberglass tub fenders, and then we would have them connected in the front with a light bar with lights all along there, and then a light bar in the back. And then Blake's got a neat idea for what we want to do with a laser cutting deal and, uh, and maybe do something twin stick garage fancy for the back there. And then we're also thinking of putting on another light bar across the two uprights there where the exhaust is going to go. So tons and tons of lights. I've actually reached out to a, a light company called Partsam. And sorry about the dust guys. I had the box open sitting there. So while I was grinding away with my Vivor polisher, it put dust everywhere. But they, they were an awesome company. They reached out to me and they wanted to help supply the lights for the Duke project here. So they got me some new torpedo lights. They make uh, just the standard what is that, the five inch rounds. So again, they're gonna go along all along the light bar at the back. We've got a couple of these real fancy ones with the with the backup lights in the center. And then they also sent me some of these as well. If you're interested in getting lights from Partsam, there's a link in the description down below with a discount code for Twin Stick Garage. Now these ones here, take it out of the bag, Mark, so people can see what you're doing. So check these out. So these are the same lights that I had up in the little by little project that I put in the cab there and they are bright. So what Blake and I were thinking of doing is we're gonna get little uh, brackets that will clamp to the frame rail and we'll put them all the way along on both sides with these lights uh, shooting down in red. So they'll just be a red underglow the whole length of this truck. So it is gonna be impressive. I can't wait to see it. Lights for days. You're gonna be able to spot the Iron Duke from space and when Blake and I get done with it. So again, Lights all the way across the back, light bar, uh, the light bar in the front that'll connect the tub fenders together. And then like I was saying, Blake's planning on building a light bar across the uprights with more lights across there. So it is gonna be lights and lights for days. Can't wait. 
So yeah, something else with the, uh, the Duke project that I wanted to show you as well. Okay, so check these out. Look at these beauties. So I've had people reach out to me in the past and say, Mark, do you know where I can get glitter shift knobs? And up until now, you've had to basically hunt around the auto wreckers and just kind of scrounge around for whatever was left when it came to these old school glitter shifters. And usually they're, they're old, they're faded, they're cracked, they're just worn out, right? And uh, so I was digging around on the interwebs one day and there's this uh, guy on eBay that actually makes new shifters in the cat paw, in the pistol grip, he actually makes glitter shift knobs with the Kenworth logo or the Peterbilt logo. And I reached out to him and I said, you know, is there any interest in helping out on the Duke project? So John, his name's John Downs, he was an awesome guy and he said, yeah, I'd gladly help you out on the project. So look at this awesome shifter that he sent. So the way this works is the, the round shift knob with the air button is going to go on this side here and then that'll obviously go on the shifter. So then all you do is when you shift your gears, you'll just use your thumb and just give the little little split. So that's going to be an awesome setup. And then he sent me a cat paw shifter, which leads me to think that he wants me to convert uh, the Iron Duke to a twin stick truck, which maybe down the road we will. So thanks for that, John. I really appreciate that. So if you're interested in checking out his uh, glitter shift knobs, you can go on eBay. Or he's actually going to be setting up his new uh, website called fueltocreate.com. So if you're interested in vintage shifting knobs, go check him out. He makes some wicked stuff. I'm really, uh, I'm really impressed with the quality of that. It's like new. And then he also wanted to help me out because if you recall on Little by Little, I actually put on um, glitter shift balls. A fan sent me um, a while back for the air knobs. And I couldn't find anywhere where you could actually have a slick way of putting on a spin-on knob, a glitter knob, on the air buttons for the brakes. And so he makes these beautiful setups as well. So it's a little set screw that goes on there. You can put the glitter ball on and it just sits on there and locks it in place. So that is classy. I like that a lot. So I can't wait to put those on the truck. So thanks so much, John. Like I say, go check him out if you want some old school glitter on your rig. So here's I actually reached out to my friends. I found this on that old Kenworth cab over down in the boneyard in Saskatchewan. Air tank under the cab. That's a neat place to put it. And I got him to send me an extra one just because this is the, the low the low direct overdrive. So it's the same. I just wanted this in case the shifter didn't work in snowman or leak. So I had this as a backup. So I just wanted to give a quick demonstration. So this, again, I'm gonna take the one that's currently in the Duke and put that on there. But then you see, you just give the little the air button a flip with your thumb as you shift it. But man, that's going to be a that's going to be a slick old school setup. So I can't wait to can't wait to put that in the truck. We still got a ways to go before I get to use those. And one last thing before I get to work, I wanted to do a little bit of mail as well because I've been getting some wonderful stuff from fans, and I wanted to see what was in here. So. So this is from Mark Cohn. Mark Cohn is the is the awesome guy that sent that that correct socket for me to fix up. Always cut toward yourself to fix up the uh, the cylinder head bolts on the on the Duke project there. Well, what do we got here? Oh, that is awesome, Mark. Thank you. Looks like you had them laser etched save the bears twin stick garage oh these are so cool thank you so much mark oh that's awesome now the missus won't get mad when i set my beer down on the nice coffee table oh look at that that is so nice of you mark so he's got a card in here christopher and monica king uh king custom woodworks.com Veteran owned, made in the USA. Oh, that's awesome. King Mudworks. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you so much, Mark. Man, Twin Stick Garage fans are the greatest. Oh, look at that. He's even got Twin Stick Garage. Oh, man. That is nice. And it's laser etched in there. 
Oh, that's almost too nice to put a to put a drink on. Thank you so much, Mark. Those are beautiful. And then one more package. Oh, and one thing to the fan that sent me the awesome Bandit Twin Stick Garage plates and sent me this plate. I didn't even realize until I was watching the movie with the missus last night and I was looking at Buford's car and I went, that plate looks awfully familiar. Daddy, the top came off. No shit. So this is even cooler now that I realize it's actually the plate off the Buford car. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm telling you, the Twin Stick Garage fans are so generous and kind. Is this from Britain? Royal Mail? Great Britain. Wow, who from Great Britain is sending me stuff? You guys are unbelievable. Hi, Twin Stick Garage. Hope all is well, sir. You put so much effort into all three of your trucks. These should have you looking smart on the road or at shows or even just around the shop. Hope they fit. If they not, they can always be wall art. I know you're busy man, so I won't keep you. Hope you like them. Regards, Rav4Guy. Well, thank you so much, Rav4Guy. Let's see what we got here. Whoa! Look at this. Twin Stick Garage in the gold and black. Oh, man, that's awesome. Little by little with the Peterbilt. Oh, and a lovely vest. Twin Stick Garage. Oh, thank you so much. You guys are so generous. That is wonderful. Give that a go. I love vests. It'll keep me warm at the truck show when I'm down there in September. <laughs> All right, well, thanks again to the generous fans, to the generous sponsors. You guys are all awesome. So with that, I guess I should probably stop talking and start working. So let's get at her. Well, I guess the first thing to go is these old Maverick mud flaps. Of course, these need to be replaced with some Hobbs anti-sale. Not bad. Okay, I guess next I might as well pull this thing outside and work on the gravel. Because there's no point knocking all this crap off of here and just leaving it on the garage floor. It's not the warmest of days out there, but at least it isn't the dead of winter, so I'll pull this outside. like before, I'm going to use my power fist air hammer gun with a needle scaler. So these little fingers will just keep going back and forth and bang all this rust off. Noisy as hell, but effective. So as you can see, it does a decent job. It knocks the rust off in a real big hurry. Now I might still 
clean it up with a wire wheel, but it'll get the biggest junk and scale off of there in a big hurry. Ooh, look at that. And then we'll uh, grind away on this and then go to the next step, I guess. to the gravel base here in front of the shop. Perfect. but it should take some primer and some paint. All right, now onto the other side and then two more sections up there. What a treat. So this is a rather, not the most efficient process and probably some of you are thinking, well, why doesn't he just sandblast this? Well, a couple of reasons. First off, I don't have a sandblaster. And the second, I mean, sandblasting wouldn't get rid of all that dirt and mud sitting down in there. And unless you have a heavy media and a lot of pressure, it won't actually knock off some of the bigger, thicker flakes. So, I figure I'll just do the, I'll keep going with this. I mean, I'm probably a quarter of the way done. And again, this isn't supposed to be, this is more a matter of preservation. Just trying to knock off the rust so it'll accept some primer and then paint it the movie correct gray. Cause I'm not trying to, you're never gonna see this. It's gonna be stuffed under, up underneath the trailer. But I just, again, wanna kinda just refresh it and, uh, and have it with some new paint before I, before I do that, so. Keep grinding away here. Man, I'm already tired and I've barely gotten started. It's a necessary evil. Okay, so I'm getting reasonably close. I was just actually under here taking a look at the brake shoes that are in here. And I thought, oh, they still look pretty good. But then you look at that one and go, oh, maybe not. So I guess I'll have to 
Put some brake shoes on here and probably some new slack adjusters because these guys have seen better days. The pots don't look too bad though. They must have been relatively recent. The sticker's still on there. And then when I was actually working on the on the outside of the frame here, I leaned up against this wheel and check this out. I don't think that's supposed to move like that. So I don't know if it's a it's a bearing issue, but that might be why this set of tandems was pulled out of whatever trailer it was under. And then I checked the other side and same thing. So I don't know if it's just a, a loose nut, but yeah, these, these back ones are ready to come flying right off of here. So gonna need a little bit of service work, but that's okay because, well, I hate Dayton's as you know. So hopefully they come off of here not too bad. This is a little bit of a different style because you'll take the, the wheel locks off and then they just have these spacers. So rather than a, a whole ring that goes all the way around like the ones I had on the tandems on the Duke, like I say, they've just got these spacers that just kind of slide off. Now, some guys didn't like these because it allowed mud and whatever to get in in the spiders, but they'll work for this purpose. But yeah, as I was saying, if I get those off of there, I can replace the, the brake shoes and then I'll be able to get better access without the tires being on there to paint in there. And maybe I can actually get the air hammer and clean a little more rust off of the leaf spring. So with that, I think what I might do, oh, still a little bit more rust, is maybe sweep out the shop and then back this in there. And then we'll start We'll start taking these wheels off and digging into whatever issue is going on here. Fun. so they don't come shooting across and get you in the knee. Now maybe someone in the comments can comment if that's actually ever happened, if they've ever seen it, or if it's just an urban legend. But I suppose it still makes sense to be Could be some potential energy there, I suppose. to 
suspend and pull the pull the wheel off and save my back. And then that'll bring the drum with it at the same time. Work smarter, not harder. Well, tell me if you think this is if this bearing is set properly. Huh. Yeah, no. And there's zero oil in here too. So this was not uh, this was not ready for the road. Finger tight. We're getting two birds at once here because, like I say, I can take I can take this whole mess off of here without having to fight with everything, and then we can reset the bearing as well. When I take the bearing out, we'll see if it's buggered or not. So I guess. Look at that sludge. Well, we can clean it up. Let's take a look at it. What I should probably do is get some crane support going here. <laughs> Work smarter, not harder. Saving my back. That came off there like nothing. Yeah, that's plenty of old sludge there. So that'll work good. I can clean that up. And we can roll this out of the way. So now that'll be easy to take the, the brake shoes off of there. I actually bought some spares for the, huh, look at that, replaced by 12511. <laughs> okay, she's a little overdue. Yeah, so I'll replace those, clean all this crap off of here. But it doesn't look too, too bad. Oh, look at that sludge. Yeah, so we'll clean the drum out. Seal looks looks to be okay. And yeah, should be able to fix that right up. Oh, that's a bummer. So because this, this one's actually tight, I wasn't able to use the, the screwdriver trick to spin the outer lock nut off of there. And unfortunately, I just don't have the right size. I think it's three and a quarter across there. And my smallest is three and three quarters. So I'll need a new socket for that. And then I'll have to figure out what that one is as well. But what I should be able to do is, I should be able to get the, the other tandem off on this side because again, that one was loose. So I can probably get that one off of there and then take the, the brake shoes off. And then, yeah, I guess I'll have to go buy some more supplies.
Yeah, so same as the other side, just plenty of sludge on there. So, yeah, I guess with that, I guess I, I've kind of painted myself into a corner. I'm going to have to go off and get the right sockets that I need for the lock nuts. Gonna have to get some Varsol to clean all this gunk out of here. Some new seals, uh, four sets of brake shoes, and probably some primer and some paint. So next week I can get at her and wrap this project up. So like I always say, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. I appreciate the input, the insights, the comments down below, the likes. And uh, yeah, like I always say, don't ever forget, if you got it, a trucker brought it. <laughs> and if there's anybody left watching, we'll see you next time on the Muppet Show! <laughs>